Welcome to Data Science. I'm Krishan Mukherjee, and today I would like to discuss about the data science, artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning, classification of machine learning, such as supervised learning, unsupervised learning, semi-supervised learning, and reinforcement learning. And at the end, I would like to show the decision boundaries and the relationship of the decision boundaries with machine learning and data science. So let us start. So my first question is, what is data? If you want to learn data science, so two words you will be data and science. So let us try to understand what is data. Data are characteristics or information, according to Oxford Dictionary, things known or assumed as facts making the basis of reasoning or calculation. In light of data science, we can say data could be numeric, text, image, etc. Therefore, any book, video, voice records, internet, etc. can be used as source of data. For instance, you can consider this video lecture. You will go to this video lecture. You will learn data science. You will assimilate the knowledge and you will implement it. So we can consider this video lecture as a source of data. Data can be further classified as structured data, unstructured data, and semi-structured data. Structured data, you can consider the uh, simple example of .csv file or Excel sheet, okay? And uh, unstructured data, you can consider the video, audio screen, so much structured uh, data you can consider email. Now, what is data science? Data science is an interdisciplinary field that uses scientific methods, processes, algorithms, and systems to extract knowledge and insights from many structured and unstructured data. Data science is related to data mining, machine learning, and big data. So data science is an interdisciplinary field. Here you will integrate statistics, mathematics, computer science, and different algorithms. We will learn algorithms from artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning, etc. Above all, data science is nothing but the use of logic. So if you don't know mathematics or statistics, don't be afraid. Every human being has inherent capacity to infer or to use logic. So logic is very, very important in data science. I will show you, I will prove in front of you, that is you know data science, but know and knowingly and unknowingly, you are using the concept of data science, but you don't know the exact terminology. So today we will learn certain terminology with examples. Demand for data scientists. In 2016, Huffington Post indicated 
there are approximately 1.5 million to 3 million data scientists in the world. IBM predicted that the demand for data scientists will increase by 28% by 2020. At the same time, we saw the disaster happen due to Corona. Now, question arises, can data science predict uncertainty? Well, let us try to understand the two terms, uncertainty and risk. We can measure risk. We can measure risk with the help of probability, but we cannot measure uncertainty. So question arises, the data science can measure uncertainty? Well, it is an open issue, but several researchers confirm that data science can measure uncertainty. What is algorithm? According to Oxford Dictionary, algorithm is a process or set of rules to be followed in calculations or other problem solving operations, especially by a computer. In mathematics and computer science, an algorithm is a finite sequence of well-defined computer implementable instructions, typically to solve a class of problems or to perform a computation. And what is algorithm? For instance, you want to go to the market. You want to visit big bazaar or any shopping mall. So what you will do? So first of all, the question will come to your mind, what to buy or what to purchase? And you need to purchase according to your budget. The next thing is you will check the time window. It means the opening and closing time of the big bazaar. And after that, you will find, you will try to find the shortest path to reach the buzzer because you want to pay less. So all questions will come to your mind one after another because our brain follows a hierarchical pattern. What we are doing basically, we are fixing a goal and after that, we are breaking the task. We are considering each module and each module what we are doing, we are trying to accomplish the task. If you can sequence all the modules or all the tasks one after another, and if you achieve them one after another, then you, then you can achieve the goal. So in algorithm, what we are doing, we are breaking the entire task and we are mentioning the step one. Okay, the first step is you want to fix what to purchase, how much to purchase, and what would be your budget constraint. Okay. Next, you are thinking about the time window, okay? The opening time and the closing time at the same time, your availability. And the last one, you are thinking about how to reach the supermarket, okay? So all these questions will come to your mind and finally you are achieving the task. This is nothing but an algorithm. Now, what is computer program? A computer program is a collection of instructions that can be executed by a computer to perform a specific task. A computer program is usually written by a computer programmer in a programming language. Computer cannot understand our language. We can call computer a Dumbo unit. But if we instruct computer in its language, then computer can perform better than a human being. So computer has its own language. And this language is popularly known as proper programming language. It has its own syntax. So what you have to do, you have to learn the syntax of any programming language. Programming languages for data science. I have mentioned only five programming languages here, like Python, R, Julia, Java, and JavaScript, and Scala. Python and R is an open source programming language. Julia is also an open source programming language. And at the same time, you know, the Java and JavaScript is quite popular and Scala is commonly used for the big data. Now, this thing is, in the next slide, you will see the, although Python is ruling in the market, but Julia is gradually gaining the momentum as because Julia is much, much faster than Python. Python is basically, you know, slower than Julia, but it is very easy to learn. Python is an object-oriented programming language, but it's not like Java. It is not like a pure object-oriented programming language like small talk. I will discuss in this next presentation about this object-oriented programming language 
and Python. Programming language is most used and recommended by data scientists. You can say Python got 83% popularity, SQL or standard query language got 44% popularity, R got 36% popularity, and if you check these uh, same diagram, so you will find this Julia got only 1%. That's because Julia just entered the market. Let us discuss about AI. AI is an acronym, Artificial Intelligence, its full name. The branch of computer science called AI is said to have been born at a conference held at Dartmouth, USA in 1966. AI may be defined as the branch of computer science that is concerned with the automation of intelligent behavior. The left hand side, you will get the uh, photograph of Professor Douglas Hofstadter, a well known American scholar of cognitive science, physics, and comparative literature. He mentioned several characteristics of artificial intelligence. I just am just mentioning these two. AI has the following characteristics it responds to situation very flexibly. It makes sense out of ambiguous or contradicting messages. So what is AI? Let us take an example. AI is nothing but the collection of, you know, several if and then you. Let us consider this way. So if weather is raining, then you will not visit the supermarket. If weather is sunny, then you will go to the supermarket then you will uh, go to the movie theater to watch a movie. Then you will go to restaurants to have your dinner. And finally, you will become home. So you are, you are mentioning, you know, several if and then. If a condition satisfied, then you will do certain tasks. Now, if you mention all these if and then loop in a computer programming language and then give a, a scenario to this computer, then computer will follow the if then loop and do the task. Now, if you change the scenario, the computer will give the erroneous result. So this is one of the drawbacks of this AI. So what we need to do, we need more generalizations. So finally, we got another field of study. It's known as machine learning, where you will get the generalization. What is machine learning? Machine learning is the field of study that gives computers the ability to learn without being explicitly programmed. The last two words is very, very important, explicitly programmed. It means in AI, as I mentioned earlier, that is we need to specify the if then loop. It is hard coding, explicitly programmed. So that's why it cannot be used for all types of problems. What you have to do, you have to change if and then conditions each and every time, and it will be a tedious task. Now, this definition has been given by Professor Arthur Samuel in 1959. He popularized machine learning. Left hand side, you, you can check his uh, photograph. Another well known professor, Professor Tom Michel, given the definition of machine learning. Machine learning is the study of computer algorithms that allow computer programs to automatically improve through experience. So remember, through experience means there is no hard coding. So we need to know how machine learning, you know, finding uh, the relationship between the input data. Machine learning algorithms can be broadly classified as supervised learning, unsupervised learning, semi-supervised learning, and pre-enforcement learning. What is supervised learning? Supervised means supervisor. In supervised learning, we will get supervisor or mentor in the data. It is basically a label column or a target column. Data set with label is expected to be very expensive. So let us take this, you know, data set. On the top, I have given independent variables. And here I have mentioned the target column. Independent variables are GNP depleted, GNP, unemployed, armed forces, population, year. So what we will do initially, we will discard this column here. And then we will try to find out, is it possible if I, if I mention this GNP depleted, GNP, unemployed, armed forces, and population, and then computer can predict the number of persons employed? Yes, this is possible. So what the machine learning algorithm will do in case of supervised learning, 
it will find the relationship between this independent variable and the target column. Target column is nothing but the dependent variable. So once it finds the uh, you know relationship between the dependent variable and independent variable, then it will use the same relationship for the another set of data and it will predict. Now, one thing you have to keep in mind in this data set, this GNP depleter, GNP, unemployed, armed forces, population, etc., is nothing but the column of Excel C or a column of a dot CSV file. And these columns name, I just mentioned GNP depleter, GNP, unemployed, etc. And these columns are nothing but the feature of data set. Now, superfluous learning is what they classified as regression and classification. We need to understand what is the difference in between the regression and classification. As stated earlier, regression and classification belongs to supervised learning, so it must have the target column. So this is the target column, blue in color. This is the target column, blue in color. Now, in the regressions, you will find the target column value, you know, the, it's starting from 60.323, and its highest value is given 63.221. So it has the lower bound is 60 and upper bound is 64. And it can take any value between 60 and 64. Whereas in this classification, the target column value is either one or zero, either one or zero. So I'm considering the binary classification because here you are getting only two levels, one or zero, okay? Now, in case of the regression, the target column is continuous in nature because it can take any value between 60 and 64 as for this example. Whereas in this classification, it is discrete in nature. I'm considering binary classifications. I'm mentioning only two levels. If you get multi-level classifications, so here you will get zero, one, two, three, this way. So classification can be further classified as binary classification and multi-level classification. Let us try to understand the regression and classifications with the graphical presentation. Now, regressions on the top, you will get a graph where X is a independent variable, Y is a dependent variable. And if you, this type of diagram is popularly known as scatter plot. Now, scatter plot means if you, if you plot the data, you will find this X and Y coordinates you are plotting here. Now, in the below, what I'm doing, I'm just using a straight line so that the straight line could touch all the points. So the meaning of this diagram is the relationship between X and Y can be expressed with the help of a linear relationship. Linear relationship equation of the straight line is Y equal to MX plus C. A is the gradient and C is the constant term, the intercept. So here, we can say the regression, what we are doing, we are finding the relationship between a given input variable, that is independent variable and the dependent variable. The relationship could be linear relationship, for instance, y equal to mx plus c, or the relationship could be nonlinear in nature. For instance, y is equal to x1 multiplied by x2, x1 and x2 two independent variables. Alternatively, you can consider another example, y equal to a x1 square plus b, a b to scalar values, scalar values, and x is an independent variable. I'm using the square term. So in regression, what I am doing? So I am taking this input variables, and after that, I am finding out a relationship between the independent variable and the dependent variable. The simple question, can we express a dependent variable in terms of independent variable? If you can, then it is a regression equation. Now in the classification, in the classification, the top example on the top, I have given 1D classification and at the bottom I have given 2D classification. What is one dimension in the classification? I have only the value, only one value, the X value. And I'm considering this large blue circle is nothing but the you know data points. Now what I'm doing, I'm considering a special value, X is equal to 10. And if the value is less than equal to 10, less than 10, so in that case, we will get a class. This class is nothing but class B. And if the value is greater than equal to 10, then we will get a value, a new class. This class is nothing but class A. So this diagram, you can check class B and class A. 
Now remember in the 1D, I'm just considering a threshold value, a point, x is equal to 10. Now in this example, it is a 2D example. First you plot the scatter diagram, that is x variable, y variable. And uh, you know, you are getting the two class, class A and class B. And the, this is blue in color class B and green in color class A, let us consider. Now, if you draw a straight line, you can easily separate them into two half. And this straight line brown in color is known as the decision boundary. So here you are getting now green color class B and blue color this class A. So what I'm doing basically, in classification, we are separating the uh, data point. Separating on the basis of what? On the basis of similarity. For instance, you can consider a simple example. In a basket, you have the apple and oranges. And now uh, you take two empty uh, baskets. And then you uh, keep apple in one basket and orange in another basket. And put a label that is apple and orange. So what will happen? Any user will come. Then he can automatically uh, find out, okay, this is for the apple and this is for the orange. Another example you can consider, you just go to your kitchen and you will find your mother is keeping, you know, spices in different bottles so that during cooking, uh, she can easily find out easily. So for easy identifications, you are grouping, you know, data points. Let us consider this too. Now, now this is a 2D example. Let us consider a three-dimensional example where X, Y, and Z coordinates are given. So how to separate the data points? You cannot use a straight line because it's a 3D. So what you have to do, you have to use a 2D plane. So dimension is three. You are using a plane, its dimension is 2D. So if the dimension is N, then you will use N minus one dimension plane to separate the data points. And this is known as hyperplane. So initially just keep in mind, there's regressions. If you face this question, Okay, it's nothing but just fitting a line. The line could be a straight line, linear relationship, or non-linear relationship. So we want to find out how to express y, the dependent variable or the target column, in terms of independent variable. In the classifications, you know, we are grouping the data points and you are then we are placing or we are putting a boundary or decision boundary. Now, what is decision boundary? Now, if you, you know, in your room or in your flat, you will find this each room, now the promoter divided with the help of the brick wall. Why? Because in each room, you can you know, decorate accordingly uh, as per your use. So that you can easily find out, okay, this is my uh, dining hall. This is my, you know, my bedroom. This is my kitchen. This is my balcony, etc easy identification just keep in mind what is unsupervised learning in unsupervised learning unsupervised means there is no supervisor so without supervisor the algorithm will uh, use the input data and it will create the label column or the target column now let us try to understand now check this uh, uh, data set here uh, we are having that is customer number, X coordinate, that is the location of the customer, this is X coordinate and Y coordinate. Now there is no data label or the label column. Now if I pass this information to my algorithm in our unsupervised uh, learning, so the algorithm what uh, it will do, it will learn the data and after that it will add a data label or it will add a uh, target column and this target column it will specify say well the customer number one the coordinate 40 and 50 it belongs to class one or uh, cluster one or level one okay so how it is doing so in 10 standard or in 10 plus 2 or even in 7 standard we have studied the euclidean distance let us consider the coordinates x1 y1 and x2 y2 so you need to find out the distance between the two points. So what you have to do, it is very simple. X1 minus X2 whole square plus Y1 minus Y2 whole square, then take the square root, you will get the distance. Now with the help of distance, the algorithm first measure the distance for each row. And after that, it will form a cluster. 
the customers, those who are close to each other. And for each customers, those who are close to each other, it will give a name, say for class one, or cluster one, or level one. So that's why you are getting here a new uh, data level and the corresponding the cluster of one, level one, or the layer one. And this type of approach is popularly known as clustering of data. Another popular algorithm you will find in unsupervised learning, it is known as a priori algorithm. We will discuss in detail later on. What is semi-supervised learning? Semi-supervised learning is basically, it's in between the two extremes, that is supervised learning and unsupervised learning. Here you will get the data set and where the data set contains the labeled data and the unlabeled data. It is broadly classified as constructive learning and inductive learning. Semi-supervised learning is broadly classified as constructive learning and inductive learning. There are so many algorithms you will find in semi-supervised learning that is self-training, health training and transductive SVM or support vector machine. So let us take this example here. Now this is a linearly separable data points. If it is a non-linearly separable data points, means instead of a straight line, you will get a curved line. Now here, the label data, for instance, class one, one side, and the label data class two in another side. Now class one is blue in color and uh, green in color, and the blue in color is class two. And the black in color, you will find the unlabeled data. So this is the example of semi-supervised learning. Next is reinforcement learning. Now reinforcement learning is close to rational learning or the human learning. Definitely you will find this human beings or animals are using this type of method. Algorithm learns a policy of how to act in a given environment. Every action has some impact in the environment and the environment provides rewards that gives the learning algorithm. In reinforcement learning, agent will learn through trial and error interactions with a dynamic environment. Objective of the agent would be to maximize the numerical error. It is not neural network, nor it is an alternative to neural network. I will discuss neural network in the next slide. It is an orthogonal approach for learning machine. Take this example. Now an agent, agent is interacting with this environment and it is getting some award and it is moving from state zero to state one. Now the question arises, what is the engine? What is reinforcement learning? For instance, he will ring a bell and you will call your dog and then you will give a biscuit to your dog and you will do it for a one week or for a month. Then after that you will find the moment you will ring the bell, the dog will come, saliva will come from its mouth and the dog will demand the biscuit. Now what is happening? Now this is a very popular, you know, uh, experiment is known as Pavlov experiment. Here dog is nothing but an agent. Now, you are using a ringing bell, you are ringing the bell, it is an external stimulus, you are calling the dog, so dog, the agent will come, it will follow some policy or action, so it will come to you, and it will demand the biscuit, okay? And the moment you are giving the biscuit, it is nothing but a reward to your agent or to your dog, and dog will keep it in memory. So next time you will ring the bell, the dog will come, and demand the biscuit. So this way, the dog is moving from state zero to state one. So you will get a, you know, several example of the reinforcement learning in the computer gaming and at the same time in the vehicle routing problem. What is vehicle routing problem? For instance, you know, with your app, if you give a, uh, if you place an order to Swiggy, and if you mention the time, so Twiggy, Swiggy will come to your house with this order and place the order. So this is nothing but a vehicle routing problem. So a vehicle will come from the depot. It will take your order from the restaurant and then deliver the order to your home. It is known as home delivery. I hope all of you know. So let us take the machine learning algorithm classifications. In this case, I will discuss about mainly the supervised learning and the unsupervised learning. See, this is the machine learning, okay? So this is machine learning algorithm broadly classified as supervised learning and supervised learning. Now supervised learning is broadly classified as classification and regression and classifications you will get support vector machine and discriminant analysis, name, base, nearest neighbor, neural network, 
then in regressions you will find this uh, linear regression a sphere support vector regressions ensemble method decision tree neural networks etc etc in clustering you will get k means clustering hierarchical clustering dd scan gaussian mixtures hidden markov neural network etc so honestly speaking you will get this opportunity to learn 68 different machine learning algorithms. So let us come here. Now, I got this image from this uh, K-Nuggets. This is, it, is, it is an open issue, although it, is, it will give you an idea. So when you are uh, working in a company, you can expect to have 60% of work related to regression, 57% of work related to clustering, 55% uh, type of work is related to decision tree or rules, 49% of work related to visualization, etc. But this is an open issue as because it depends upon your uh, work, what type of project, where you are working, who is your client, etc. But this diagram will definitely give you an idea how much focus you should give on a particular topic. Well, let us come to the neural network. It is, you know, for long, the research scientists and the uh, computer scientists and the same time the developers have been trying to develop the replica of human brain. Neuron is the smallest unit. This is the neuron, the smallest unit of human brain. It has the dendrite, the tentacles, it has the body, the nucleus, and at the same time, it has a long tail. And you know, at the end of the tail, again, it has the root, it is known as action termon, terminal. So what is happening here? In the brain, you will get thousands and thousands, billions and billions of neurons. You will get a stack of neurons. So from one neuron and another neuron, you will find the information, the flow of information. The information of flow will occur due to electrochemical reaction. I repeat, due to electrochemical reaction. A pulse will form. And these pulse will be, you know, sensed by your brain and it, 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 it will recognize, well, this is the object, this type of work I'm supposed to do. But in computer, it is not possible to do electrochemical reactions. So what we can do, we can use mathematical functions. This mathematical functions is nothing but known as the activation functions to create the spy. So let us take this mathematical function here. This is the body and this is the dendrite, okay? I am taking input x0, x1 and x2 and I'm multiplying it with a scalar W0, W1, W2. What is scalar? Nothing but a simple numeric value, say 0 0.55, 0 0.35, etc. And after that, within this body, I am doing some mathematical work. Summation sign, this is the summation sign, I is equal to one up to three because three input, WI, XI plus B, B is known as bias. I will explain in detail what is bias is. So if you, expand the equations you will get w0 x0 w1 x1 w2 x2 okay is it okay guys okay cool now i will pass this expression w0 x0 w1 x1 w2 x2 plus b to a mathematical function now this mathematical function could be sigmoid function tan hyperbolic function tan hyperbolic functions or value functions okay Initially, I, I will focus only on three. And from these functions, I will get an output. And what I will do next, I will give this output to another neuron. So this way I will form a stack of network and I will process the in information from the input data. And finally, I will get the output data. So let us try to define deep learning. There are two definitions you will give, the conceptual definition and the technical definition. Now, conceptual definition is deep learning is a computer program that can identify what something is. Deep learning, technical definition if you consider, deep learning is a class of machine learning algorithm in the form of neural network, just now I discussed, that uses a cascade of layers or tires of processing unit to extract features from data and make predictive guesses about new data. So what is deep learning? Machine learning is the subset of artificial intelligence and deep learning is the subset of machine learning. In the deep learning, we are using neural network. Just now I discussed about the activation functions, 
Velu, Sigboy, Tan Hyperbolic, etc. And all these functions you will get in deep learning during the study of the deep learning. Let's see deep learning in detail. What is deep neural net, DNN? Now, deep neural net, DNN, DNN is an actor name, is an artificial neural net with three or more levels of nonlinear operations. I discuss what is nonlinear is. Say, let us consider y equal to x1 multiplied by x2, x1 and x2 is independent variable. Now, you didn't ask a question what is dependent variable and independent variable. Dependent means the value of y will depend on the value of x and x2 if you consider the two independent variables. Independent means their value, you know, it is independent because it, it, it's uh, x value of x1 and neither depends on x2 uh, nor it depends on y. Okay, so let us take this diagram. So this is input. From this input cell, it is connected with this hidden cell and this hidden cell is connected with this output. So this is the deep neural net in the simplest way. And all this cell you can consider as a neural net. And here you will get this lot of activation functions. And what they are doing, they are processing it, passing this output uh, to the hidden cell, hidden cell using this output as input. And then again, give the output, this output, you know, uh, it goes to the output cell. Okay, guys. And this is, you know, it's a holistic approach I'm giving this definition. We will discuss more in detail. I will show you the code and I will explain the flow of information, how the flow is happening. Now let us take this Venn diagram. Venn diagram you have studied in 10 standard 10 plus 2. Now Venn diagram, if you check, the artificial intelligence is the outer set. Machine learning is basically the subset of artificial intelligence and deep learning is a subset of machine learning. Now in this case, you will get you know a more generalized explanation of this artificial intelligence machine learning and the deep learning. The outer set is artificial intelligence that is knowledge based. Now the machine learning is basically the subset of artificial intelligence. I mentioned here certain algorithm that is SVM, it's an acronym, support vector machine, RF, random forest, ALA, logistic regression, DT, decision tree, etc. I will show you later the, you know, in the next slide that is, uh, sorry, the, in the next presentation, the uh, relationship between the logistic regressions and the neural network. Now the next layer is the representation learning. Example autoencoder. Representation learning is basically a subset of machine learning and deep learning is a subset of representation learning. Okay guys. So now what is data science? As I told you earlier, the data science is nothing but an integrated approach. But overall, it is an application of science. You might ask a question, so what is your contributions in this presentation? Well, I should say, now I will disclose my presentations or my concept related to data science and machine learning. Now, behind the curtain, you know, when you are using an algorithm in machine learning, uh, I just, this I will uh, explain uh, in light of the classifications, you will see that is, all machine learning algorithms are deeply connected with the term decision boundary. We are using the machine learning algorithm in data science. So decision boundaries are very, very important in data science. So kindly watch and try to understand and I will explain later. Discuss what is happening here. So it is a classification problem. You can check this blue points and pink points. Blue points belongs to class one, let us say, and pink points belong to class two. Now our objective to you know to put a decision boundary in such a way to classify the data points. Now the dotted line is basically the optimum decision boundary. I'm using a machine learning algorithm, and behind the curtain, the machine learning algorithm, you know, this way fixing the a rectangular decision boundary you can check but you can see easily well you are fixing the machine learning algorithm it is true but it is not in position to separate the data points properly because 
you can find certain blue points here. They are surrounded by the pink points. This is nothing but the error. Now, in any machine learning algorithm, when you are going to implement it, you will get certain uh, amount of error. You cannot get 100% accuracy. But in this case, it is quite clear this optimum decision boundary shown as a curved line, the dotted line. This is a nonlinear decision boundary is outperform, okay, the you know rectangular uh, decision boundary. Let us take another idea. here this I'm using the same uh, data points okay but this time I'm using a separate machine learning algorithm and this machine learning algorithm is not creating the rectangular decision boundary it is creating a separate type of decision boundary so guys what is happening in machine learning this machine learning is different machine learning we must learn because this machine learning behind the curtain using different approaches to form the decision boundary and here I'm considering this classification example to classify the data. Here I have only two levels. So it is an example of binary classification. And this is the relationship between the decision boundary, machine learning. And when you are using this machine learning algorithm in data science, you need to be very, very careful about the type of data and the selection of the machine learning algorithm. So the moment you will learn, your eye will open and your eye can check yes this is the voice of my data and this is popularly known as the eye of data scientists so welcome to my class and please wait for my next lecture so if you have any question please share your question or you can send email to my email id thank you very much i'm krishna Mukherjee. i will return with my next lecture within short period of time thank you very much